Hey, sneaky little back in for another video for tonight. Yeah, another one. My God, I'm on a roll. Yeah. As you said, I've seen before, I've been going back to my roots. Yeah, my roots. Not a TV program, but my roots of what I do in Linux on YouTube. Today, we're going back to Tiny Core. Do you remember Tiny Core from millions of years ago? It's still going. It's still got quite a, a following, actually. If you've never used Tiny Core before, I'm going to show you some things about it that might be a little bit different to every Linux you've used, okay? So I've actually installed it here. I'll do another video on how to install it very soon, actually, because some of you new guys won't know what the hell you're doing. And it is pretty easy now. In the old days, it was quite complicated. But now it's quite simple. It's a one-click job, and it'll install to your partition or your hard drive or your USB flash drive. No problem. Now, I've moved the bar up to the top here just to make it a little bit different from everybody else. And I've made the background totally blue, okay? I've installed some programs for you, but we'll go through that in a second, okay? So I've kept all the Wi-Fi, just in case I want to use my Wi-Fi, which I don't because I'm using Ethernet here. I've installed a file manager. Just I'm just using rocks at the moment. I can open it up for you. And there's rocks. So about the eye, the eye of rocks. And there's the stuff that's in there. You may want to use something else like PC File Man or some of the older ones even. Because this is really, really, really basic. The basic download is 12 meg. Then you can go up to about 26 meg for the next one. Or you can get the Core Plus, which is around about 130 meg, which comes with a lot of Windows managers and stuff, which, to be honest with you, aren't that much different. So don't worry about that too much. Just get the basic Core Plus, which is 130. Choose your Windows manager. Have a play. It will play super fine from your live CD, even on 256 mem of RAM. Okay, you will be able to get stuff done, so that's not a problem. Anyway, so I've installed Firefox. Okay, so I'll open up Firefox. It works as it should do. Now remember, once you click them, unless they're on demand, they'll take a bit longer. Okay, because this is a really small distribution. So if I can type in there uh, YouTube. Oh, it's come up. There you go. So we'll just click on there. We'll go straight to the tube site. As you can see, so it's a bit lucky, but it is a development version. This is the release candidate, by the way, the release candidate. So if I put me in, just so you can see how it works, and there I am, okay. We click on me, we'll just go to that one there from God knows Anargo, and you'll see the videos play out of the box, even with the adverts. I oh, know, I know. Now you'll see, oh my God, you'll say, well, that's a bit weird at desktop. Yeah, I'm using Xvessor at the moment. I've not installed Xorg or any other, anything else, okay? So once you get into it, you'll find out what you're saying. Okay, so I'll skip the ad. My video plays fine. I'll go to that size. Old school, yeah, you know. Yeah, you know. But it plays. It's super duper. Or I can fast forward to here, maybe even. There you go. Don't look too good. But I'll go up to the settings a bit more and see if it'll play a bit better, okay? It's not given that option to go up at the moment. Okay, so I'll need to actually upgrade the graphics on the machine to do that. But it will play, okay? Or maybe this video is so old, it's only in Flash. You'll find that sometimes on YouTube, okay? So we'll get rid of that. There you go. If it's on Chromium as well, Chromium works fine out of the box. Some things won't work when using a release candidate. I'll be really honest with you. But that's why it's called a release candidate at the end of the day. You have to test things. Chromium works fine. That's okay. Get a terminal, which is TC box or Tonical box. Okay. Now I've installed Elsa. You need to install everything individually. So when you download this 12 meg download, nothing comes with it. You have to do it yourself. You can't say, well, why is there no sound? Why is there no video or anything like that? It's up to you to do it. And I'll give you an example in a moment. Now I've only installed Abbey Word. And there's a reason for that. For the simple reason. I'm missing some libs to make it run correctly. It will do it fine. So if I put in uh, here, oh me, sorry. There you go. It will do what one. A bit slow. We'll do that again, shall we? New line. There you go. It will do your work perfectly, but you do need to build everything up. And you will notice like some flashing here and there because you're missing some dependencies. It won't give you every dependency. It will give you the basic ones, but not everything you want, okay? Also, my bar here, by the way, the bar is normally down the bottom, by the way, okay, is your mount tool. So I've still got the CD plugged in, but I'm actually installed to a hard drive. This is not a save file, it's actually installed, okay? You can run an application, so run program. And the next one is the one you're going to like, so apps. So how do you get stuff on TinyCore? 
Oh, this is how you do it. So I'll bring it down to the middle bit so you can see it. Click on apps, cloud, and browse the apps. And there's a list of your stuff, okay? So I've installed you installed Abbey Words, so that's no problem, is it, okay? So I'll scroll down, I've installed Elsa. I'll quickly install the program so one you know. Uh, I could do get flash, couldn't I? Should I do get flash? No, I won't do that. I'll do something else. Let's go a bit more. Thank you. will know that's more relevant to many people that are going to watch this video. Oh, rhythm box even. Okay. I've got no music player on it at the moment, so let's install rhythm box. So we'll go for the basic TCZ. That's the basic file. There's two others here you can play with if you want to, but you are still going to be missing some dependencies for audio. But what we're going to do, we're going to install that onto the drive. Okay. So we'll just click go. And there you go. So I'll drag that down for you so you can see what's happening. You don't like it, though. So. Let's start doing that here. Okay, so it's downloading all that stuff. What we need for the Risen Box. But it won't be everything. What you need to do is go and get audio, audio stuff ready to rock and roll, basically. Oh, no, it's got Elsa, but it just won't play, okay? You need to get all the other stuff you need. So we'll give it a couple of minutes. It shouldn't take too long at all, actually. Wow, it's doing that a bit. Oh, it's done. Okay. So, you've got Rhythm Box installed, and it's up there. Now, if I click that, it might not open, but shall we see? It's opened, but it won't play because I've not got all the audio that I need to run it. Okay. This is where we go back here to the apps. Go to apps again. Cloud Remote. Browse. I'll go down there, and you'll need to go down to the audio stuff, which I'm not going to do for you to them at the moment. But also here you'll see some other stuff called uh, our desktop. What is it? Our desktop. RDP client for Windows. Okay, that's all right. There's lots of stuff here for you to play with, but if you want to really build your own system, but you don't want to do CLI all the time, you want a GUI, Tiny Core has always and will always be the one for you to go for. I know, I know. But it's always been that way. So as you can see, I've got my bar on top here. I'm just going to show you a couple more things before I sign off. Okay. So go to control panel. You can change the wallpaper. Well, you can't. You can change the colour. Or you can download some stuff. It's entirely up to you. So say I want to change it to red. So I move that over to there. Preview. A bit red for me. We'll go to that colour there. We'll preview that one there. Oh, that looks like sick. Go to the green. No, I don't like green. I think we'll just go back to blue, really. That looked, that looked fine for me. So we're done there. We can just configure our bar. Now, I've put it on the top here, as you can see. So originally, it's down the bottom. So if we scroll down, go to the bottom, and apply. And there we are. See, super. So you scroll on the icons. They come to a certain size. But say you wanted them icons a bit larger. You just go to the zoom section. Wrap it up here. Apply. And as you can see, the icons get a lot larger. That all depends how you want to run it, really, at the end of the day. Okay, so we'll get close that one. Expressor here is to run, say, what size screen you've got. Unless you want to run Xorg. Now, when you're running it in a box, you won't get the right settings. So keep to Expressor, to be honest with you. But if you're running it on real hardware, go straight to Xorg 7.7. .7. That's the one you really need to do, okay? Don't worry about the swap file tool. It will do it all itself, okay? It's really good nowadays. It's not like it was back in the old days, okay? Now what happens here? When I finish using my tiny core, what do I do? Okay, there's your exit. Now as I've already installed it, it will save all my stuff to my hard drive. You click OK, and it's done. Or you can reboot. It's entirely up to you. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, super duper. Remember also, it's one click and not double click. I've been using so many one click distros at the moment that I'm getting confused myself. But if you want to build a distro yourself and try playing around with all the libs and stuff to get stuff working, I mean, you can get LibreOffice, OpenOffice, it's all here for you. But some of it may not work straight out of the box. You have to configure and work out what bits are missing. So for some fun, this could be the one for you. I mean, I liked it. I've liked it for years and years and years. And I'm sorry I've not given it no love for the past couple of years. But here, the love's coming back. Sneaky links out. I see those. Bye-bye.